guys, it's Stephanie with Simricky, and welcome to a Sims 4 speed build slash renovation of a house that I built with my friend Nicole, aka True Rogue Rebel. Now, we actually did a little twist on the 10 minute challenge, and we decided to each do a five minute challenge. I would build the exterior of the home, and she would build the interior of the home. And let me tell you guys, it was kind of a fail. <laughs> I know somebody said it really wasn't that bad, but I mean, come on, it looked like a clown house. House. I was trying to be cute and do something like funny but still pretty and it just turned out horrible and I apologize to Nicole a million times for giving her this like hideous clown house to work with but she did a pretty good job with the inside um, so you kind of just saw me quickly tearing it down but I will make sure to link both of our videos of the original collab that we did in the description below so you could check that out kind of funny to watch just a cute little quick video um, but anyways we both decided to renovate it and make it look like what we actually would like it to look like and instead of the, the mess that happened in those five minutes. Um, so we basically had two rules and I kind of broke them both. <laughs> but the first rule was not to change that rainbow door. So technically, I didn't change the door. I just changed the color to a purple rainbow instead of a red and yellow and green and blue rainbow. So technically it's still there. And then the second rule was not to change the inside layout of the house and not to change like where, like if the bathroom was a bathroom, it had to stay a bathroom pretty much. Um, but the only thing I kind of broke on that rule was I kind of shortened one of the bathroom walls just a tiny bit, just a little bit so I could fit a proper bed in the bedroom. But other than that, I stuck to the rules. So um, yeah, I think it came out really cute. I didn't really expect it to come out so like, I guess sort of whimsical and fairy tale-ish. I don't know. It almost looks like a cute little cottage out of out of like a fairy tale. <laughs> but then again, it also looks kind of like old lady-ish on the inside, which you guys might know that's part of my aesthetic. I know that sounds weird, but I kind of like the old lady chic type thing, like the <laughs> the grandma patterns and the vintage Victorian type furniture. Um, so these windows I end up using aren't really traditional enough. They're a bit too modern for the look that the house ends up going. So I do change those at the very end, I believe. Um, they do stick around for a while until I kind of realize they really stick out like a Thor Thor ah, blah, 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 sore thumb. I can talk, I promise. <laughs> um, and the roof, the roof kind of has like almost like a purple lilac-y tint to it, which I thought was really cute. And the funny thing is, like, when I first did this collab challenge, the reason the house came out with all those crazy colors was because I was like, okay, I always do blue. Like, I always... <laughs> I always do blue. Let's do something different. And then what do I end up doing? Blue. But at least it's a turquoise. It's a little bit different. I mean, it's not like blue, blue. I I'm sorry. I like blue. What can I say? It just happens. It happens. <laughs> uh, once The Sims gives us some more choices for, for I don't know, like roof patterns and windows. I'll probably be able to experiment with those a bit more, but pretty much, yeah, pretty much blue. I mean, I know there's other colors I could do, but I feel like anything you do has a blue tint to it anyway. So what can I say? What can I say? Um, I really like those little windows. I think they're adorable. They almost look like little flowers. So I thought those would be perfect and definitely wanted to do the landscaping here to look a little bit more fantasy-like as well. They're they're sort of just like springtime flowers. They just make me happy. They look so pretty. <laughs> and I sized up, I always forget that you can size up plants. So I sized up that white one just to make it look like a bush and then put a few little ones around it. And then I use this little landscaping tool just to make it look like there's little flower petals spread all over the home. And then I'm using my favorite tree. I love this little white tree so much with the lights around it. It's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. It feels, um, again, very, very whimsical and fantasy-like and almost, oh, I could almost see this entire build covered in snow. How pretty would that be? Like in a little winter wonderland? Oh, oh, just thinking about it. I think that would be gorgeous. Um, once we get seasons, I will have to, well, hopefully, fingers crossed one day we will get seasons. <laughs> I will have to go back and see what this house looks like in the winter because I think it would be beautiful. And yes, I know there's a mod for that, but I try not to use any mods at all. The only one I use at all in The Sims 4 is one that's, um, I don't even know what it's called, but it like kind of controls the user interface so you could change the time of day. So if I'm building and then for whatever reason I end up like at nighttime in live mode when I go to take screenshots, I can actually change the time to whatever I want so that it's daylight outside. And the mod does a few other things, but that's the main reason I have it. It doesn't really change my gameplay. It just is for building purposes, really. So other than that, I don't use any mods or CC. And honestly, I really don't think I would unless, unless like I said, it really, it really makes build 
building easier, more convenient, or something like that. But, 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 but I do still wish we had lounge chairs, but I stole this trick. I can't remember where I saw it originally, either Devin or maybe, um, maybe Devin Bumpkin or who else might have done that? Sim proved maybe. I don't know. I saw someone use the ottoman and the chair together to make it look like a lounge chair. And I was like, that's perfect. I'm going to start doing that because one of my biggest grapes is no lounge chairs. I still don't understand why we don't have any, but maybe one day we'll get like a cool beach pack or pool pack or backyard pack. I know we already got a backyard pack. That would have been a great place to put lounge chairs, but for whatever reasons, we didn't get them. So hopefully one day we do. And now I'm working on the kitchen here. I wanted to keep it again, just, you know, kind of pastel-like on the inside. So I do use a lot of white base furniture, but then I really spice it up with the colors um, and the decorating. And it does end up being a little bit cluttered. You guys probably know I love to clutter up my homes. I didn't want to make it look like a hoarder's house or anything like that, but I definitely wanted it to look like someone lived here for many, many years and just, you know, decorated the place with all of their wonderful collections. And speaking of collections, do you guys collect anything? I've, I've been asked this before and I always say brooches because like that's the number one thing that I collect, but I actually collect a few different things. So yeah, so the first thing uh, that I obviously always mention is the brooches. And if you don't know what they are, they're basically just pins. They're like little vintage grandma pins that you would see like someone put on a hat or a coat or something. There's where I changed the wall. Oops, little cheaty cheat there. Eee, it happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I collect those. I love them when they're shaped like animals or flowers. Um, those are pretty much my two favorites. And that obsession kind of started with my dad. He, I don't know if I saw something I liked and he bought it for me or if he saw something he liked and bought it for me. But as far back as I can remember, he's always bought me little brooches every time we went to garage sales and flea markets and things like that. So he would always bring them home as a gift for me. And I just love them. I love them so much. So I probably have over, I don't know, I'll have to count them one day. I would, I want to say like probably close to 500. I know that sounds like a lot, but I've got layers of them. I have a little shadow box table next to my bed and it's just layer upon layer upon layer of brooches inside of the glass case. And there's a few other things in there, like some old Victorian looking um, handheld mirrors and brushes and maybe like a door handle or something. I don't know. I just, I love vintage and antique stuff so much. So another thing that I collect that I only started collecting recently, and I've been trying not to get any more because I have so many as well, are teacups. So again, so, I'm such an old lady, guys. I'm so sorry. I, lo I love it. What can I say? Like if this was my house, which I would totally live here, all my teacups would be on display. Like that would be, that would be one thing that was just like displayed everywhere. So I actually started buying them because I was making candle teacups. So I would take the teacup and the saucer and I wanted, I pretty much wanted like individual ones. I didn't want a whole set because I wanted them to look very unique and special. And I would buy the wax and melt it down and put different colors and scents in them. Like really fun scents like gummy bears and banana and like orange creamsicle, just like really cool stuff and make the candles. And I was selling them at my store for a little bit and they sold really well one year for Christmas. But then the following year, they didn't sell at all. Like <laughs> Barely anybody bought them. But by this time, I had already collected hundreds of teacups. I'm not even kidding you, like hundreds. So whatever I had pretty much already made into candles, I just sort of packaged up and gave to my friends for their birthdays and Christmas and things like that. Uh, I sent one to my aunt. She loved it. My mom really loved them. So I made her a few, a few special ones that I have now. And yeah, that was... <laughs> candle teacups. They were fun. They were fun though. So I couldn't bring myself to sell the rest of the teacups that I had, but I did, I tried. I went through and I just sort of picked my favorites and my favorites still ended up being like three entire boxes full and I sold the rest at a garage sale and I kind of wish I didn't because they're, I don't know, there were some really pretty and unique ones, but I, I still kept a lot. Like I definitely have a lot and I don't display them because if you watched my apartment build, which I'll make sure to link in the description below, you'll know that I don't display anything at my apartment. Like if you walked into my apartment, you would think that no one lived there, honestly. Like everything's in boxes. We have a little bit of furniture in the living room. We don't have a dining room table. We have nothing on the walls, nothing on display. 
Uh, I mean, the bedrooms look lived in, but that's about it. But if I did decorate and I had time, trust me, I would have like big curio cabinets with all of my teacups displayed in there. And I have some really cool ones from Japan that are supposed to be worth a lot of money. So maybe one day, maybe one day I'll sell those. We'll see. We'll see. But that's another thing I collect. Um, what else? What else? Another collection I used to have, and I talk about this. Um, well, I don't specifically talk about the collection, but I talk about moving a lot and selling things every time that I move to kind of downsize in the Rainbow Tiny House Living Community build that I did. So I'll make sure to link that below if you want to check out that story about every time that I've moved in my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in that story, I talk about how one summer I just kind of downsized everything to move from a house into an apartment. And that's why I like the idea of minimalistic living and tiny house living. Um, but one thing I sold off that I do kind of regret was my Fenton collection. And again, I know, another old lady thing. Ah, what can I say? I'm an old lady. <laughs> but if you don't know what Fenton Glass is, it's basically a company, I think in Virginia, that makes um, glass, like glass vases and glass art and glass bottles and glass bowls. And they're really pretty, usually really pretty colors, very intricate details. Oh, they also make lamps, like really cool, beautiful lamps, like stuff that you would see in the Victorian era or um, one that was specifically fashioned around the movie Gone with the Wind. It was like a hurricane lamp. Oh, so pretty. But they have different types of glass and different kinds of colors and the older Fenton is worth a lot more money, but I had a cute little collection. It wasn't very big. I had maybe 10 or 20 pieces and I sold them because I needed money and I kind of missed them, but <laughs> maybe one day I'll collect those again. They're just, they're fun and they're pretty. And again, where would I, where would I display them? They would just be in a box anyway. So I guess it's not a huge loss, but I don't know. Sometimes I wish I kept those. And what else do I collect? Um, this one's a really small collection. Like I had this little whim to go out and buy these and then never really did again, but they're glass photos and tin photos. And I'm not sure exactly what era they're from. I'm not really too familiar with them, but they basically used to print photos on glass and tin a long time ago. And they end up looking really cool, especially like the ones of people because you can see like how how old they are just based on the clothing that they used to wear. And I don't know how to explain them, but they're so pretty. Like you, you could just see how old they are and like how the glass is worn and how the tin has been worn down over the years. So I have maybe, if I had to guess, probably about 15 or 20 glass photos and maybe like 10 tin photos. But those are, those are another thing I like to collect. <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much it, or that's, you know, pretty much all I really have left. Um, but yeah, tell me, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to know what type of stuff that you guys collect. But let's go back to the build. I'm doing the landscaping now, and I usually don't do a lot of it, but I am trying to get a little bit better. I like that little stone path I ended up laying down, and now I'm just going through and putting flower boxes in all the windows because I figured that would be pretty appropriate for this house. And, of course, we have that beautiful pool in the backyard and the little eating area, so I have to make sure that we have adequate lighting in the back. And these little candles are so cute. Just to upsize one of them like that and put the little small ones around it I think looks really, really fun. That's something I would have lying around my house as well. And got to put the little turtles in the pool. They are so adorable. <laughs> I love the water that has the petals on top. It's just very romantic and sweet and pretty. So I really, I don't know, I'm really in love with this house. I would totally live here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> I hope you guys like it as well. We're probably going to get into screenshots here very shortly. So here is a close-up of the front yard. Now we've moved on to the living room. This couch, I love it. This pink and the blue and the piano and the purple walls. Oh my gosh, like I said, totally my aesthetic. I love this kind of pastel vintage -y stuff. And butterflies everywhere. Whoever lives here loves butterflies. So we had butterflies above the dining room table and in the bedroom and that cute little desk no computer just a writing desk or a reading desk and our itty bitty little bathroom <laughs> and here's a better shot of the yard so guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you again nicole aka true rogue rebel for doing this collab with me i will make sure to link her version of the renovation as well once that is up so that you guys can go watch that and don't forget to subscribe i would be really appreciative if you subscribe so that you can watch my videos. I post Sims 3 and Sims 4 content daily. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!
Wait guys, before you go anywhere, make sure to click over here to subscribe and click down here to watch some more videos. See you next time.